Amen, amen. Good morning sa ating lahat at salamat po sa opportunity ngayon na mapag-aral po ng kanyang salita. Welcome po sa ating Workman's Treasure Study Series and we're blessed to have everyone ngayon. And salamat sa pagkakataon na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin a great opportunity indeed to preach the Word of God, not to preach ourselves but to preach Christ, our Lord, amen, our Savior. Uh, this morning and... Uh, Uh, welcome again sa ating Workman's Treasure. Today is uh, Thursday and every Thursday we're learning about the series on grace po mga kapatid and prayer. Puli po mga kapatid na atin pong um, um, ma-enjoy ang salita ng Diyos today. Matutunan po natin, makilala pa natin lalo ang Panginoon sa araw po na ito. And, uh, purihin ang Panginoon mga kapatid sa binigay niyang pagkakataon po sa atin. I'd like to welcome everyone dito si uh, of course sa ating host salamat sa ating host na si brother brother Joma na pag uh, ano po sa atin ngayon sa pag um pag uh, host po sa atin ngayong umaga and salamat sa uh, kay sa mga dimakulangan kasama din natin ngayon and of course si brother Randy at uh, kasama din po natin ngayon so Um, hindi pa ako nakapunta sa ating FB Live po mga kapatid. So, try and puntahan po natin. And um, 
of course I'd like to welcome din sa bawat isa na nandun ngayon sa sa atin pong FB live. Okay, please let please let us know na nandiyan po kayo para ma-recognize po namin kayo and you may drop a comment or uh, greetings or testimony. And uh, okay, so pasensya na mga kapatid, so magpakulay siguro ako ng buhok, ang aking buhok ay puti. So parang tingin ko sa sa ano sa dito sa online ay sa camera, parang walang buhok kasi nagre-reflect sa sa whiteboard no. <laughs> It's okay. Amen. So tingnan natin, ganoon talaga. Hindi lang pumuputi pero monuminipis at umaakyat. So alam niyo na ibig kong sabihin noon. Amen. Amen. Good morning and uh, um and uh, exciting po ang ating lesson ngayon. Pagpatuloy po natin ang ating pinag-usapan dito po sa series on grace and sa specifically topic on the teachings of grace or dito po sa teachings of the law. So we'll talk about that mga kapatid as we as we go on. So let's play some music regarding sa ating theme po mga kapatid. Let's play some music regarding po sa ating theme ng grace po mga kapatid. Okay? So me uh, prepare some music and atin pong audio ano din let me share my audio para po ma madali po sa atin magano. Okay, magpatugtog. Okay, um, let's play this song po mga kapatid from uh, the inspiration Nothing Less Than Grace. Okay, let's play this song Nothing Less Than Grace. <laughs> How measureless, how fathomless our amen, God, amen. master of the universe was he. To make me new, he saw me through redeeming eyes of love and found a way to set me free. He saw a blood-stained rugged cross with Jesus lifted high, a sacrifice that sin could not erase. There the Lamb of Righteousness was left alone to die. He knew it was nothing less than grace. Oh, it was grace that embraced me when I first knelt down to pray. It was grace that replaced my sin and washed the stain away. It is grace that will keep me till I look upon His face, nothing more. And nothing less than grace Years before I tried so hard To make it on my own Living life the best that I could live But more and more I'm falling short My sin could not atone I'd given all that I could give Then the Spirit said to me I've paid it all my child in me you will find a resting place bowing down in brokenness I gave to him my life I knew it was nothing less than grace oh it was grace that embraced me when I first knelt down to pray it was grace that replaced my sin and washed the stain away it is grace that will keep me till I look upon his face nothing more and nothing less than grace oh it was grace that embraced me when I first knelt down to pray it was grace that replaced my sin and washed the stain away it is grace that will keep me till I look upon his face nothing more and nothing less Amen. than grace. Nothing more, nothing less than it grace. It is grace that will keep me till I look upon his face. Nothing more and nothing less than grace. Nothing less than grace. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Nothing more and nothing less than grace. What a blessing po mga kapatid na na atin pong matutunan ang biyaya po ng Panginoon. Praise God sa kanya pong goodness and uh, praise God. Uh, 
Dahil wala tayong ibang masabi po. Nothing more, nothing less than the grace of God. That's our Christian life. Amen. We have to uh, praise God always sa Kanya pong goodness sa atin. Amen. I'd like to welcome some brethren with us. We still have time to welcome dito sa FB Live po mga kapatid. And we're joined with uh, Sister Mercy Barrera. Good, ngayong umaga, sabi niya, good morning. Uh, brethren, good morning Sister Barrera. Glad to glad to have you with us again ngayong umaga. And uh, purihin ng Panginoon. Amen. We're also joined with Brother, ay, Pastor Jonathan uh, Ratunil. Of course, as always, Pastor Jonathan is from um, CDO po mga kapatid. And glad to have him this morning. Sabi ni Pastor Jonathan, good morning evangelist and all brethren in Christ. Amen, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And also, we're joined with uh, Brother Jess Litargo watching with us from Canada. Once again, good, good evening dyan. Good evening. Canada, good morning to all brethren. Good morning, Brother Jess. Glad to have you with us. Amen. And also, Sister Kath Paredes. Blessed morning to everyone. Glad to listen again. God's message. Amen. Good morning, Sister Kath. And of course, our host, like John, kama po natin si Brother Joma, even sa Facebook. Amen. Good morning then, Brother Joma. Amen, amen, amen. What a blessing. Uh, kapatid, dito sa ating mga reactions, uh, we're already joined with Sister Emmy Floor. Amen. From uh, Manolo Fortich. Nun, wife po ng ating comrade, friend, brother, na si uh, Pastor Raul Floor. Amen. We're also already joined also with Sisters uh, Brother Carlo and uh, Coralde. Amen. And Sister Cherry Ruth Parr also. And Sister Evelyn Parr. Glad to have you, brethren. Good morning po sa inyo. Greetings po from, um, of course, from the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And praise, praise God for that po mga kapatid na nibigay po ng Panginoon po sa atin. Amen, amen. So, let's let's play another song po mga kapatid. Let's play this song from, um, um, may, saan ba yung, I miss playing the song, yung Under Grace. Okay, from the, Let's play the song Under Grace from the Lenses family. Let's play the song po mga kapatid. Amen. This is a good song po mga kapatid. Start with it from the beginning. Listen to the truth of the song, man. to measure east to west man man to the old shines lowest steps you'll find no Meet the laws 
demands but God in mercy had a plan his son's own blood amen amen his son's own blood amen my sins be erased praise the lord Praise the Lord. Amen. It's very deep. Amen. Grace, my... Praise God for that song. Amen. It was buried deep under grace. Amen. Praise the Lord. Woo! Either you are under grace or you are under sin or under the law. So saan kanyan po mga kapatid? But praise God, I am under grace. Amen. Amen. Sabi ni Sister Cherry Ruth Farr, ngayong umaga, good morning po ulit, sir. Rods and to all brethren, salamat sa preaching kaninang umaga. Praising the Lord for allowing me to enjoy Him and His Word so much the more. Amen. Glory to God po. Praise God for that. Good morning, Sister Cherry Ruth. Amen. And um, Brother Carlo also sabi niya, Amen. Glory to God. Amen, amen. It's a blessing to note po mga kapatid. Amen. We're under grace. I am under grace. You're under grace. No longer under sin. No longer under the law. Amen. But under that grace now reigns, amen. So we'll talk about more of that as we 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 magnify the grace of God as we study these the teachings of the law, because they are in direct contrast. And if you would like to appreciate grace, you need to, or if you'd like to know the teachings of grace, you need to first understand the teachings of the law. Sometimes to learn things, mga kapatid, clearly is to know what it is not, amen. To know what it what it is not. So uh, that's that's also one of the tools or or ano po or ano po method of teaching is to provide the negative side or the other side mga kapatid. Amen amen. So praise God for that. And uh okay, one more song po mga kapatid, last song then after the song we will go on ahead because mag magna 9:30 na so tama pa for one song. We'll go on ahead with our Bible study after the song. The title of the song still from the Lenses family. The title of the song is Grace for Every Need. Grace for Every Need. This is another wonderful song. Amen. There is joy divine that is ever mine Since the Lord has forgiven me Amen. And I work and sing for my blessing King. By His grace I have been made free. There is grace for every need. Grace for you, grace for me. Keeping true, keeping free. Precious saving, grace in Flowing from the throne of love. Grace to Christ. Grace now receive full forgiveness, all may win. Yes, there's grace in the Lord's perfect love. He will ever keep when the tempest sweep. I have grace for each trying night. So I go in love to the 
this friend above ever trusting his grace and power there is grace for every need grace for you grace for me keeping true keeping free precious Grace now receive full forgiveness. All may win. Yes, there's grace in the Lord's perfect love. Oh, this wondrous grace is for all the race. It is boundless and full and free. And I trust and to my blessed King, who by grace now is keeping me. There is grace for every need. Grace for you, grace for me. Keeping true, keeping free, precious saving. Grace and death, flowing from the throne of love. Grace to grace to Praise the Lord. There is grace in the Lord's perfect love. Praise God for that. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Welcome everyone. Sino bang humahabol pa dito po mga kapatid? We'll see. Okay. So uh, anyway, you, you may just po, put some comments there. To let us know. Recognize po natin if we still have time later po mga kapatid. But let's go on ahead sa ating Bible study. Let's start with prayer. Thank you dear Lord sa inyong goodness sa amin. Salamat sa kabutihan na binigyan niyo po Lord. Salamat sa napakagandang pagkakataon na binigay niyo sa amin. Once again, na matututan namin ang inyong salita. Mapatuloy ka namin ma-appreciate at ang inyong pong goodness sa buhay po namin sa pamamagitan po ng inyong salita. Ngayong umaga, Panginoon, tulungan niyo kami na makakuha ng understanding sa mga bagay na gusto niyo namin matutunan. Amitin niyo ang inyong lingkod at ang mga kapatiran na ngayon na kasama po namin. Sana itong mga truths namin pag-usapan maging malinaw before us, Panginoon, at Give us a right appropriation, Panginoon, sa mga katotohanan po na ito. And let the Holy Spirit, Lord, will lead us and help us to yield and to be obedient, Panginoon, and follow the path or walk in the path that the Holy Spirit is wanting us to tread. And help us to be vulnerable always, Lord, lalo na sa inyong mga katotohanan na ipapakita po sa amin ngayong umaga. Sana ikaw po patuloy mag-protect sa amin pong um, broadcast ngayon. Sana hindi po mantala. Ikaw pong bahala, Lord, mag-take care hanggang ito po ay matapos. Pinabalik po namin ang papuri. Pasasalamat sa pangalan ng Panginoong Jesus. Amen. At amen. Okay, mga kapatid. So we're here now. And I'd like to welcome Brother Mark Tejada and Brother Peter with us ngayong umaga dito din sa meeting room. Amen, amen. So, as we look at Actually, nasa introduction pa tayo ng teachings of grace or the teaching grace. We we talk about already the 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 term grace, the the saving grace. We look at already the the keeping grace, mga kapatid, and also now we look at now the teaching grace. But one of the things na maintindihan natin yung teaching grace or the teachings of grace is we need to look at the opposite of grace, which is the law. So we look at for, for how many weeks ito yung napag-aralan natin po mga kapatid. One year na po itong pag-aaral na itong teachings of the law kasi last 2020 pa ito eh. Ngayon 2021 na tayo. No? So we talk about this. Lahat ng ito, ito, yung, ay, ito pala. Hanggang ano palang tayo? Hanggang number 10. And I discussed po natin. So we already discussed the meaning of the term law. I gave you the whole outline so that alam nyo kung anong direction natin. Although in between ay may mga points, may mga... May mga diniscuss pa tayo but gusto ko lang ipapakita sa inyo na for how many weeks already and months that this is so far what we have gotten po mga kapatid at ito yung binigay po ng Panginoon sa atin and I just like you to to realize that that the Lord is so good by 
providing us these things po mga kapatid. Okay? And uh, we look at already the meaning of the term law. So we define the law. Kasi broad ang law, general, no? So we look at also the significance of the various law. Kasi as we look at the meaning of the term law, we discovered that ang law ay daming laws sa Bible. I mean system. It, it is a system. And a, and a system which God used to govern. It's a law. So we found out that there are at least mga, mga seven kind of system in different dispensations. There will be, there was a, a law, the natural law, the inherent law, if you remember that, yung sa tao. So mga kapatid na, na kahit walang written law sa kanya, may law that that is the works of the law written in his heart. We call it the inherent law. Every every person that is born in this world ay merong ganon. At isa po doon sa law na yon is yung consciousness na may Diyos. Okay? Na may Diyos. So, of course, at ang consciousness of good and evil, nandyan na po kahit wala pong written law. So, and many, many more. Even ang last law na ibibigay ng Panginoon sa future, which is the law of the kingdom. So, may law. Of course, isa doon sa ang mosaic law. May law doon sa time ni Adan. We call it the Edenic law. And my law din sa time ni, ni, ni Abraham, mga statutes and commandments na binigay ng Panginoon kay Abraham. Of course, merong mosaic law. At my law din sa ating panahon ngayon, hindi na ngayon law ng mosaic law, but this is the law of the spirit of life. And there will be law in the future, and that's the law of the kingdom, or law in the kingdom po mga kapatid. So, the significance of this various law, no significance niya. Of course, we, we understand that God is the God of order, that God is king, God is ruling, God is governing. So that's why there must be law. And through these laws, God is governing and dealing with, with his people. Okay, we, we look at also the use of the term law in the New Testament. Kung paano ginamit yung word na law in the New Testament, it was mentioned as it represents the law as the metonymy. We talk about kahapon sa interpretation a metonymy is a isang isang bagay used or it is a word or a statement or i mean object used to represent mga kapatid okay represent something so the one is yung law the term law mentioned it represent the entire old testament so ginamit sa old sa new testament ang law means the entire old testament or the term law was used in the new testament it means also po mga kapatid use as the five books of Moses. Okay? Or the law in the new, the term law in the New Testament was also used as ano po mga kapatid as the the code of conduct yung mga policies lahat ng iyon ng mga nakalista yung mosaic law mismo yung pinaka mosaic code of conduct na including the moral law, the social law and the, the ano po mga ceremonial law. So kasama po yun po mga kapatid no? as code of conduct, yung entirety, hindi lang yung five books of Moses. Another term ng law na ginamit sa Bible, it is used the law in general or it is also used the law as the yung ano po mga kapatid na nandito sa, sa inherent na sa law like for example yung, yung there is a law in my members. So it, it, it serves as a form or a force or an influence that is internal. Po mga kapatid. So, and it represent also the other scriptures, yung law, so or the scripture. So we talk also about the origin and source of the Mosaic law. And you know the origin and the source is none other than God. And we look at also the, the nature and content of the Mosaic law. So we look at the law can be subdivided into three, three categories. We have the moral law, the social law, and the ceremonial law and the content of it, ano pong mga purpose niya, and the recipients of the Mosaic Law, we understand that the recipient of the Mosaic Law po mga kapatid is none other than the nation of Israel because the Mosaic Law is the bilateral agreement between God and the nation of Israel and that determines everything about the life of Israel eh, sa kanya pong social, sa kanya pong ano po, uh, religious, sa kanya pong economics, and lahat ng sphere and aspects sa buhay ng isang isang hudyo po mga kapatid ay dominated by that law kasi siya yung direct na recipient. Hindi po to binigay sa body of Christ, hindi po binigay sa Gentiles, binigay po mismo to that one nation who will take ano po charge dito sa mundo sana. But uh, of course, sila yung binigyan na yan. That's for the children of Israel. 
the characteristics of the mosaic law po mga kapatid, marami po tayong pinag-usapan when it comes to the characteristics of the mosaic law po mga kapatid that uh the, this law po mga kapatid the foundation and and the basis of the mosaic law is the covenant that God made to Abraham so uh, actually the foundation of the mosaic law is the Abrahamic covenant which is i i already ano po mga kapatid established last time sa mga previous natin na mga broadcast so the mosaic law ano pang characteristic niyan it's holy it's good and it is spiritual and the mosaic law is weak in one area because it is dependent on man's ability. Sabi ng Bible, for what the law could not do, so may limitation ng law, it is for it is weak through the flesh. So yun yung weakness ng law. Ang weakness ng law, it's not the law itself, but the weakness of the law, it is weak through the flesh. It, ang, ang weakness is yung medium. Medium kung saan sino yung mag magiging recipient ng batas yun yung weak it's not because the law in itself is holy perfect just but the keeper of the law is weak yun po yung problema po mga kapatid okay so another thing uh, the mosaic law is also an indivisible another characteristic niya it is an indivisible unit po mga kapatid ibig sabihin if you keep one law you are debtor to keep the entire law. On the other hand, if you offend one law, you are also guilty of all. So it, they are in divisible unit. So ano po ang blessing on the other hand also? So when Christ paid the law, since the law is in divisible unit, He paid it all. Hindi lang ito lang, kasi in divisible eh. When you pay one, you have to pay everything. When you miss one, then you will miss everything. So that is to say, when Christ, okay, end the law, He end everything. All of it, its entirety. And it's a matter of belief, it's a matter of faith. May iba, in-insist, ah, hindi, ang nafulfill lang, pero hindi kasama, lahat, kinompleto ni Cristo, pero hindi kasama ang tithes. So ganun palagi, oh, aalma na kagad ang mga pastors, ay marami po, bakit mag-aalma ka pag tithes ang pag-uusapaan? Napabatanggin niyo ulit ako. So napag-usapan na po natin yan. Ayaw ko na ulit pong babalikan po. But you have to understand that po mga kapatid. Okay, it's entirety. That includes its curse, its condemnation, everything about mga kapatid. I-explain ko further as we go on ahead po mga kapatid. And of course, the Mosaic Law, another characteristic, it stands, okay, in contrast, okay, to the grace of God. It stands in contrast to the grace of God po mga kapatid. So yun po yung kabutihan po, ang kagandahan po. Kaya kaya naintindihan niyo ngayon why we have to go to the teachings of the law. Why? Because that's the the one of the best uh, teaching method po mga kapatid. An explanation okay to teach you about the teachings of grace is to let you know what the law is. So that what you could understand what grace is all about po mga kapatid. So yun po yung yung biyaya at blessing po na yan po mga kapatid na dapat nating makita. Okay? So we also discussed the purpose and function number eight, the purpose and function of the mosaic law. Pag-usapan din natin yung its purpose and function po mga kapatid. Of course, in general sense, ang law po mga kapatid, it was given to provide the standard of righteousness. It was given to provide a standard of righteousness. That's the purpose okay, and function of the law. It is to provide the standard of righteousness, the standard of holiness, the standard of justice. And you see, the law is the expression and the manifestation of who God is. It is the manifestation of the law giver and the law maker. And that is our God. So it, it embedded there the the holiness of God, the righteousness of God. So it provides the standard. So in the process, the Mosaic law revealed the righteousness of God. It revealed the holiness of God, the goodness of God at the same time. And mga kapatid, and the law, this Mosaic law po mga kapatid, was given to Israel is to reveal who God is. Okay? To reveal who God is. At the same time, not only to reveal who God is, at the same time, to shed light on the reality of that great gap 
or gulf or gap po mga kapatid that separates God from men. How God is so so holy, extremely righteous and just while man is exceeding sinful to provide a gap na makikita po natin through this law na ang layo talaga ng gap between God and man. That uh, through this law, malalaman ng tao that how could by myself reach God when there is this law that is so great and so holy? How could I do that? How could I, how could I uh, um, accomplish it by myself? I need help. Amen. Therefore, the law is our schoolmaster. It is the schoolmaster to bring them to Christ. Supposedly, isa yun sa mga purpose ng batas. The law was given, another function and purpose was given to identify sin. It is to identify sin and it is to reveal, mga kapatid, men's sin and unworthy condition that man is guilty before God. So that's the purpose of the law. It was not meant to take away sin, but it is to identify and to reveal sin and to reveal the helpless and the the ano po mga kapatid unworthy condition of men being a uh, guilty sinners before God po mga kapatid so the 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 law reveals mga kapatid to man just who and what he is mga kapatid and that he is sinful and that he is separated and that, that he is helpless mga kapatid and and ano po miserable po mga kapatid because he is guilty amen that there his human strength his human resources is incapable and that is unable also to bridge the great gap or gulf po mga kapatid between god and men so that is just to show them and of course the law was given another characteristic ng law it was given po ay a purpose ng law it was given to shut up to faith to end the, the law is to end up to faith remember po mga kapatid uh, the 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 law is our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ we are no longer under the law when faith came and that faith is the lord jesus christ po mga kapatid so dapat maintindihan that that uh, Christ, the law is to lead him to christ as only means of justification as only means of righteousness. Amen. It is pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is just a temporary guardian as what I have told you po mga kapatid. Okay? So we also look at the limitations of the Mosaic Law. So I'm, I'm nag-run through po ako mga kapatid because by Lord willing, by God's help, ma-finish na natin ito. Para sa next week po mga kapatid, pupunta na tayo sa teachings of grace proper. Tapos na tayo para ipakita at maintindihan natin. So, uh, we'll try our best na matapos natin itong lahat. No? So, uh, dito na tayo sa limitations of the Mosaic Law. So, we discussed that last time also, yung limitation of the Mosaic Law. At marami pong limitation ang Mosaic Law po mga kapatid. And one limitation is, number one, we learned that the law cannot justify. Remember? I discussed this uh, lengthily last time. And number two, the law cannot give life. Okay, it cannot give life. And number three po mga kapatid, the law cannot give the Holy Spirit. The law cannot provide the Holy Spirit. Amen. No, no, nothing can provide the Holy Spirit except believing by faith po mga kapatid. Amen. We receive the Spirit by hearing of faith, not by the works of the law. Amen. So we, we explain also a little bit of the sinner's prayer on how they use the sinner's prayer to receive the Holy Spirit. Very wrong. There is no law. There is no schemes of men that you could receive the Holy Spirit. But the, the only condition that the Bible tells us concerning how we can have the indwelling spirit in our life is through faith, through believing on the finish work on the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and there is no other means. The Bible says, in whom ye trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, then ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. The order is very precise, and there is no way that you will alter it and change it. Ora mismo ang isang, isang makasalanan, mananampalataya sa gospel of his salvation when he believe on that, after that 
you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise instantaneously. The Holy Spirit will dwell in that believer. The Bible says, because you are sons, God sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father. So do you, do you see that? So we, we talked about that last time po, mga kapatid. So it cannot give. Nothing can give the Holy Spirit. Not even the law could provide the Holy Spirit, mga kapatid. Now, another thing, it cannot make perfect. Okay, it cannot make perfect or permanently deal with sin. It cannot make perfect and it cannot make permanently deal or provide permanently deal with sin. So it is simply designed to be a temporary guardian until the coming of Christ, okay? Until the suffering Savior came. Dapat maging malinaw po sa atin yan, mga kapatid. Maraming mga Kristiyano, hindi nyo lang na-realize. As we go sa teachings ng grace, As we go next week po mga kapatid, sabi, maraming nagsasabi, yes, hindi na tayo under the law. Pero di, di nila na-realize that they put themselves under the law because of ignorance. Hindi nila binigyang pansin yung Pauline epistles, yung mga instructions para sa church. Hindi nila na malayan po mga kapatid that they're doing, they're doing a practice from a previous administration or previous dispensation. I-expose natin yung mga bagay po na yan po mga kapatid in light sa salita ng Diyos, tingnan po natin kung paano po na-violate ng marami po mga Kristiyano ngayon. That's why, ang dulo po natin, warning against the entanglement with the law, okay, as believers today. The, yun po ang end natin, kasi I'll end, give you with a warning po mga kapatid, because marami pong nag-mix, admixture po ngayon po, nag-add at nag-mix at nagbabawas po mga kapatid, at hindi pwede, hindi po yun pwede under grace because grace is so pure. Grace can be, cannot be diluted, cannot be contaminated. It should be remained, mga kapatid, unadulterated. It should be remained pure, mga kapatid, or else otherwise, the Bible says, grace can no more be grace. Not only in the grace of God in salvation, but grace in living in day-to-day -day life could not be mixed with other things po, mga kapatid. So mamintain dapat yung principle ng grace for it grace to be grace. So, we'll talk about that as we go to the teachings of grace. Do you think this is not an issue? It is an issue because so many Christians right now live in a parasitical life without even knowing it po mga kapatid. That they, they are still ano po mga kapatid. Nag-expect pa rin sila dito sa batas po na ito. Hindi nila namalayan, iba lang man siguro ang term, pero tingnan po natin po mga kapatid. So, It is designed a temporary okay guardian until I I demonstrated po dito po mga kapatid nung pagdating po ni ni Kristo no so okay baba nila ako para magka magkaroon tayo ng momentum sa pag-aaral no so let me draw this again saan kaya yung pen ko kaninang ginagamit ha parang mahina to na pen tingnan ko lang ha baka ito okay We have the focal point, the cross po mga kapatid, para hindi natin mamala, mano. Uh, ito yung mountain na ito. So, uh, in, in my timeline, I, I, I draw three mountains always po mga kapatid. Important, no? So, ito yung rapture po mga kapatid. Bigyan natin ng pansin ng rapture dito. So, uh, although we have other ano po, ito lang yung basic na gusto ko isulat po sa ngayon para makita po natin. Ah, sige, tama lang pala to, dito para maintindihan po natin. Oh. So, and also po mga kapatid, here's another mountain and this is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have, we have Mount Sinai, we have Mount Calvary, we have Mount Olives po mga kapatid. So, three prominent mountain peaks na gu gusto kong makita po natin sa ating timeline para maintindihan po natin. This is where the law was given. This is where Christ died for our sins. And this is the, the, the day or the, the place where Jesus Christ will come again, touch down. This is the coming of Christ in the clouds. This is for us. This is for the Jews. Amen. This is for everybody. This is for the Jews. Okay? Dapat maintindihan po natin ang area po na yan. Okay? So, you know, the law is a temporary guardian and it would be shut up until Christ will come. So, up to here lang po mga kapatid. So, itong time na ito, we discussed this is under... Okay, the law. May kita po natin, ito pong time natin dito is under 
grades. So, very unique po yun dito, under the law ulit, under the law of the kingdom, sa future. Pagtingin, uh, pagtingnan po natin po mga kapatid. So, anyway, dito muna ang focus natin. So, it is a temporary guard, guardian to bring them to Christ. Pag madating na si Kristo, siya yung nakasulat na mag-fulfill, mag at mag-end ng law. So, sa viewpoint ng mga Hudyo, na fulfill na ni Kristo, dapat dito ang law po mga kapatid. They are waiting for a new law sa future, which is the new covenant, panibagong covenant. The old covenant is the mosaic law, but the new covenant would be that, mga kapatid, ma-exercise sa millennium. So of course, hindi pa nangyayari ang new covenant kasi pinasok ng Panginoon ang grace sa panahon po natin. This was unprophesied. Alam po natin, this is the mystery period. Walang nakakita sa Old Testament na may ganitong pagkakataon, pangyayari. So it was expected sana, remove this grace dito, tribulation supposedly ang mangyayari, then the millennial kingdom. Of course, we know in the mind of God, may nakatago siyang mystery truth na dito lang sa panahon natin ni-revealed. And guess what? That includes you and me, and that is the administration sa atin pong panahon where includes the Gentiles now putting everyone into the body of Christ. Those who are saved by grace will be put and be baptized into that body of Christ where we enjoy now po mga kapatid. Praise God. Praise the Lord for that. So supposedly, yun po, no? it would bring them to Christ. Kaya lang, ang problema po nila, they trust themselves. They trust their righteousness. They trust their own works rather than what God. So they rejected. Kaya wala pa rin po mga kapatid. Sayang. Sayang na sayang po mga kapatid. And the book of Romans is really po mga kapatid is a defense on that po mga kapatid. And also the book of Galatians para makita po sana. No? So wala po nangyayari. At it cannot. So ano nagiging epekto? What are the effects of the Mosaic Law? Okay, the effects of the Mosaic Law. Dahil po, they failed to see the real significance of the law that supposedly the law should bring them to Christ, mga kapatid, because they failed, mga kapatid. Ano nagiging epekto ng law po, mga kapatid, as a law system? If it is approached, mga kapatid, on work basis, at ano naging nangyayari po sa kanila? So the law brings curse. Yan po yung nangyayari. Na-discuss natin yung last week. The law brings curse. Yun ang nagiging effect. Okay? Yun ang effect niya. It brought curse. What else po mga kapatid? We open up last time doon. It brings death. Yan ang nangyayari. Because the law is a killer. It killeth. The letter killeth. Yun ang effect mga kapatid. Instead of putting their faith on Christ. By the way, I'd like you to, I'd like you to, ano po mga kapatid? No? I'd like you to, to see the 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 dito sa panahon nito, I'd like you to see the 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 law in in three areas, which is what we have. Number one, the moral law. We have the social law, and we have the ceremonial law. So we know the ceremonial law includes the tabernacle and the offering. So bago po so bago pa dumating si Kristo, ano ginagawa nila sa panahon nito? Itong most of the ceremonial law, okay, points to Christ. Okay, it typifies the they prefigure of what Christ is going to do, itong ceremonial law. So this ceremonial law is the way of way out para sa para sa isang Hebrew or sa isang Israelites na hindi po siya makondem. It's a way out para sa kanya po mga kapatid. So for example, ma-violate niya ang moral law. Okay, pag ma-violate niya ang moral law, it would lead him to the ceremonial law. At pag ma-violate niya ang social law, it would lead him to the ceremonial law. So iibig sabihin, it is also a picture to bring, okay? For the law is to bring them to Christ. This is a picture of to bring them to Christ. So, ibig sabihin, every, every violation of the moral law, the Ten Commandments, would lead them to bring them to the ceremonial law. Every violation of the social law will bring them to the ceremonial law. And all of the ceremonial law is a typology and a prefigure of what Christ is going to do. The tabernacles, the sacrifices, the shed blood, and everything there, and the offerings po, mga kapatid. As if, mga kapatid, the moral law 
the violation of the moral law will bring them to Christ. The social law will bring them to Christ. But the real execution is not with the blood of the animals of bulls and of goat because it could only be just th temporary. It could provide temporary atonement, temporary forgiveness, temporary forbearance, at lahat ng yun para lang makipagtungo ang Panginoon. But the one that would cancel all sin, cancel everything po mga kapatid, is this. So ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, faith lang doon sa ginagawa po nila would, would, yun would suffice, a temporary para bang kumbaga ang tawag po niyan ay ano bang tawag niyan yung sa, sa transition yung yung trans hindi transition yung temporary na pang ano muna hindi yun ang final kumbaga kung OIC mo na siya hindi pa siya ang real na officer talaga at that time uh, parang I, I lose the term in my mind po mga kapatid na madali sana nating maintindihan but I, I think you, you understand what what my point is no I think nakuha niyo ang gusto kong ipupunto sa atin po mga kapatid. Okay? So, yun ang problema. So, it did not brought them to the ceremonial law. Of course, alam ng Diyos, ma-violate talaga nila. Alam ng Diyos na magkasala talaga sila. Pero itong ceremonial law is ano po ito po mga kapatid? Is the expression of God's goodness and mercy. Dito nila ma-experience ang mercy seat. Diyan nila ma-experience ang, ang blood atonement mga kapatid sa panahon po na yan, although sa blood of animals. But it is enough po mga kapatid, although it could not take away sin, but Jesus Christ will, will do that. But they, it has to wait. That's why the law is not cancelled because it has to wait until the school, uh, until Christ will come to bring them to Christ po mga kapatid. So, yes, my, sabi ni brother, just parang stop over. Ano muna, yung parang temporary na muna siya, dyan ka muna. Trans, habang transitional pa, habang waiting until paglaga, pagdating po ng tamang panahon. Okay? So nakikita po natin, that's the purpose of the law. Ang problem is they thought that ano po mga kabatid, uh, hindi po nila tinake seriously. So ang nagiging epekto ng batas, by the way, the law is good sa mga law, sa mga walang kasalanan. Pero once the law is violated, yun ang problema. Wala kang, walang problema ang batas kung if you have not violated anything. That's why the law is good. It's holy. It's perfect. Kaya lang, ang real problem is when you, when you pay or when you, when you sin, then you will start to pay po mga kapatid. So, it would be a curse. It would bring death. It brings condemnation. It makes offenses to abound. And it declares men guilty. And it holds men in bondage, mga kapatid, in bondage to sin. Kasi ang law is simply to show his total, to to show man his total helplessness and hopelessness before a righteous and holy God, po mga kapatid. And pag if you mess up with the law, if you mess with the law, amen. Wala ka magagawa don, but to pay, amen. Kung what was required para sa kanila. So this is because the, man is sinful. Amen. And man in his sinful state never fulfills the righteousness of the law, especially in the spirit of the law. And man in his sinful state will always come short. Come short po siya talaga palagi po mga kapatid in his sinful state. Wala siya magagawa dun. Amen. And he becomes even condemned, more condemned and guilty before God. That's why they have to wait, mga kapatid, panahon na yan. So, now, let's look at now the next part, the end of the Mosaic Law as the rule of life. As a rule of life. I'd like you to look at that, mga kapatid, as a rule of life. Okay? Iano natin to, baka pagkamalan ng nag-notes. Okay. The end of the Mosaic Law as a rule of life. You know, The Mosaic Law, not only a guardian John, but that's the rule of life. As what I have told you, the law provides the standard of righteousness, the standard of living. So it is, it is, ano po mga kapatid, undeniably the rule of life. It dominates sa, sa buhay ng Christ, sa buhay ng ano po mga kapatid, ng isang, ng isang hudyo po mga kapatid. Itong law po na ito, everything sa kanya po mga kapatid. 
And lahat ng kanyang kailangan gawin, yung purpose na yun, ay it dominates sa kanyang buhay. No? Uh, everything, mapa-social life niya, mapa-religious life niya, mapa-family life niya, mapa-society, mapa-economics. That's really the rule of life. Ang Hudyo. Ay ang, ang law para sa mga Hudyo. So, the fact is established. This, this fact that, that the law ends, the Mosaic law ends, is an established fact. It is, it's not something, mga kapatid, na, na kailangan na pinoforce natin o pinipilit po natin, but it is an established fact in the Scripture. And there are several passages clearly established that the coming of Christ, His first coming po, mga kapatid, has brought an end to the Mosaic law. And one of the result of that, that first advent of Christ is to brought an end to the Mosaic law. Therefore, we could say now we're no longer under the law, but under grace, because this cross work over here provide the end of the Mosaic law. That is established fact in the Bible, and you don't have, even have to guess for it, but it is clearly established. Let's look at Galatians chapter number 4. Let's look at some scriptures to provide some ano po mga kapatid, truths how the law ended by Christ. Look at Romans uh, Galatians 4 verse 4. Babasahin ko. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. So, you see that? We're to redeem them that were under the law. Amen. Look at Hebrews chapter number, we're already redeemed, therefore, nawala ka na ba? Parang you are snatched out of that, of that rule or domain. Hebrews 9 verse number 15, the Bible says, it's very clear here, Pumap dead. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by the means of death, for the redemption of the transgression that were under the First Testament, they, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance okay so there's already redeem redemption under from that first testament let's look at ephesians chapter number two ephesians chapter number two mga kapatid, um, the bible says um chapter number two it says here in verse number 15 po mga kapatid, the bible says having abolished in his flesh the enmity even the law of commandments contained in ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So one thing na makikita mo, that not only the law ends, but the law was ended by Christ. So it was done by Christ. Nakita mo sa Galatians chapter number 4, who redeem us from the law? Christ. In Hebrews 9, who, who is now the mediator of the New Testament for the redemption under the First Testament? Who? Who is the Redeemer? Christ. Now what you see in Ephesians 2, who crucified the law? who abolished the law, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, containing ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. Who? It's still Christ, po mga kapatid. It is, it, that, that is to say that when Christ come, po mga kapatid, or came, dito po sa mundong ito, he has, he has brought, mga kapatid, an end to this Mosaic law. Let's look at another passage in Colossians chapter number 2. Colossians chapter number 2 in verse number 13. The Bible says in verse number 13 of Colossians 2, And you being dead in your sins and, quick, and the uncircumcision of your flesh had quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwritings. Look, look at that. Blotting out the handwritings of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principality, and powers. You see that verse 14? Blotting out the handwriting, nailing it to his cross. So anong effect na ngayon? Anong effect when Jesus Christ already nailed it to the cross po mga kapatid? Anong sabi niya dito sa verse number ano po? Verse 16. Let no man therefore. Let no man therefore. So that's a conclusive. Conclusion. Why? Conclusion from what? From what Christ accomplished in verse 14 that blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So it was a conclusion. Therefore, in verse 6, let no man therefore judge you in meat 
uh, in meat or in drink or in in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So do, do you see that the law the law was just a shadow po mga kapatid, of things to come. And who is that mga kapatid? It's the Lord Jesus Christ po mga kapatid. At makikita po natin that was very clear. So no man could be judged according to the law. The law could not anymore judge us by what Christ did on that cross of Calvary. We become dead to the law. Amen. We are already dead to the law, po mga kapatid. It's, a, it's an established truth. Let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter number 3, another passage that would, would allow us, that would establish the fact, mga kapatid, that indeed the law in, ended when Christ came. Then rightfully so, we are no longer under the law but under grace because of that po mga kapatid look at second corinthians chapter number 3 look at verse number ano po mga kapatid verse number um verse number let me read verse number 14 but their minds were uh, verse number 13 muna not as moses which put a veil over his face okay sabi dito uh that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Anong pangalan? That which is abolished. Anong nangyayari dito? Abolished. Amen. Could not look at the end which that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded for until this day remaineth the same veil and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ. Ano pang term na ginamit sa Bible? Done away. Amen. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the when Moses is read and read the, the veil is upon their heart. Okay? Nevertheless when it shall turn to the to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. It's a Done away or taken away? Sino po? By Christ. Dito po. Anong pagkaga pagkagamit sa Colossians kanina? Put it out of the way. Anong pagkagamit sa Ephesians kanina? Having abolished the enmity. Ano pang pagkagamit kanina? Nailing it to His cross. So, do you see that terms na ginagamit sa Bible? So, what is my point, mga kapatid? What is my point is, this fact is strongly established by the Bible and trying to, to ano po mga kapatid, um, brought back the, the law by salvation or by, by, by practice or manner of life is an insult to what Christ had done. Amen. It is an outright insult of what He has He has done for us, mga kapatid, and for the believers po, mga kapatid. That's why as we go later on sa, sa life under grace or dito po sa teachings of grace, it's really, really a serious mistake and sin, mga kapatid, na to, to bring back the law which Christ already ended. That every believer right now, okay, is no longer under the law or subject to the law. It is clear. Let, let's look at Romans chapter number Romans chapter number 10, mga kapatid. Romans chapter number 10. And the, the, the verse is verse number verse number 4. Romans 10, the Bible says, verse number 4. Ano sabi po ng Bible? For Christ is the end of the law. So ano, ano, ano po mga kapatid? Christ is the, sino siya? End of the law. Is the end of the law. Why po mga kapatid? Because rightfully so, balik ka sa Galatians chapter number and righteousness to everyone that believeth po mga kapatid. Balik ka, why Christ is the end of the law? Siya yung huli, huli ng law. Kasi siya yung nagtumapos ng law. Siya yung nagfulfill ng law. Siya yung nagpasan ng law. Siya yung nag-accomplish ng law. And it was Him who nailed it to His cross, who abolished it, who done away, who taken away, or put it out of the way po mga kapatid. 
Therefore, the law is no longer, mga kapatid, has the authority over the believers sa ating panahon po natin and we're no longer under the law. Because it was said po, mga kapatid, dito that before faith came, Galatians 3.23, before faith came, we were kept under the law. So before this cross, we will kept under the law. Why it must be the cross? Because when Jesus Christ was born, He was still under the law. But what is the purpose of His, of his birth or His incarnation? So that He might redeem us from the law, from the curse of the law. Mga kapatid, there's already redemption from the curse of the law. Redemption of already provided po, mga kapatid. So, but before faith came, we were kept under the law. Amen. Shut up unto the faith which should hereafterwards be revealed. So how will the law be shut up? Do you know what other words of the word shut up? What other word could be used for the word shut up? Close. The law will be closed. Will be shut up. Will be closed. The Bible says, shut up unto the faith. And you know this? This is the faith. And that is the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shut up unto the faith. Kasi, but before faith came, bago po itong dumating, we were kept under the law. So rightfully so, under the law. Shut up unto the faith. It was closed. The law was closed. Unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. So the revelation of that faith is Christ. He is the manifestation of that faith. Verse 24. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster. Okay. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. That we might be justified by faith. And look at verse 25. But after that faith is come, we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Dumating na bang faith? Yes. And the Bible says we are no longer under we are no longer under the schoolmaster. Okay, clear ang sinasabi ng Bible pag sinabi ng we are no longer under the schoolmaster, therefore Romans chapter number 6, verse number ano po mga kapatid? Verse number uh, 1. Okay, uh, verse number of course verse number uh, ano na lang 14 and 15. But Bible says for sin shall now have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace. God forbid. So we will discuss that in another meeting po mga kapatid. Ito pong under the law or under grace. But ang point lang natin na establish, it is, a, it is an, an established fact. Amen. That Christ indeed, amen ended the Mosaic law. Amen. And I'll tell you later on in what area Christ ended the law po mga kapatid. When he ended the Mosaic law, he instituted a new law. Wow! May new law dito? Which is we're going to discuss on that. That is the law which is uh, operating in grace. And what is that? Is that the law kagaya ng Mosaic? No, it is entirely different. But that is the law of the Spirit. Amen. The law of the spirit or the law of liberty. Mga kapatid, kaiba po yun. So this, this fact is settled po mga kapatid. This is fact is settled na, na wala nang law under sa Jerusalem Council sa Acts 15. They established that doon sa Jerusalem Council sa Acts 15 na iniintindi na nila po mga kapatid ang mga apostol na mismo nagsasabi po mga kapatid. Let me read Acts 15. Let me read verse number 6. Start ng verse number 6. Kasi may mga tao po, mga kapatid, verse 5. Let, let me read verse 5. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Napansin niyo po, may mga ano po, may mga hudyo dito na believer na kay Kristo. Pero sabi nila that needful pa rin to circumcise them. Needful pa rin na sino yung mag-believe, magpa-circumcise. So ilalagay niya sa batas ulit. And to command them to keep the law of Moses po mga kapatid. So and the apostles and the elders came together to consider of this matter. 
and when there had been much disputing so may kaguluhan pa rin we know because because of the transition because ang kasanayan nila they were under the law but since they already believed Christ they should not impose the law sa sa mga mananampalataya but may nagsasabi na kailangan pa rin so ni resolve na mga apostol ang ang issue po na ito nag conference po sila and when there had been much disputing Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made a choice among us that the Gentiles by the mouth okay, should hear the word okay, of the gospel and believe. In verse 8, And God which knoweth the heart bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us, them purifying their hearts by faith. So the, the means of purification now is by faith. Verse 10. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear? So yung yoke na yan is yung keeping ng law. Why do you keep, do you, do you still charge or obliga, oblige the Gentiles to keep the law which you and me have not even able to bear? So yun po ang kanyang sentence. Therefore, verse 11, But we believe that through the grace, look at that, but we believe that through the grace, mga kabadet, nakikita niyo po, through the grace that of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. Okay? Kaya nga ang, ang epekto nun, then all the multitude kept silence. Ang tahimik! Kasi nanibago sila sa sentensya ni Peter, at ang sentensya ni Peter that we believe that, ano sabi dito? That through grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved. So there was a, a clear, from the head of the apostles, there was already a clear sentence. Amen. A very precise sentence that we can now only be saved through grace and no longer po mga kapatid. No longer by the law of Moses. Sa panahon po na yan. So it was declared. It was an established truth, mga kapatid. The only thing that the Jerusalem Council asked sa Gentiles, ano yung inas nila sa Gentiles? Na, okay, anong inas po nila po, mga kapatid, pagkatapos niyan? So sinabihan po nila dito sa verse number uh, 19. This is now the sentence of James. Look at sa chapter number 19. Wherefore, sabi niya, my sentence is, that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. So, wag po nating guluhin na. Amen. Ay mga believer na mga hintil. But look at, and ito lang ang request nila. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. Okay? So, yun lang ang request niya. Anong request ng mga apostles? They are no longer under the law. But the apostle asked, mga kawadid, was that the Gentile believers, okay, ang inaslan niya, yung control ng kanilang liberty. Ano yung control ng kanilang liberty in matters that it might be offensive? It might be offensive to Jewish believers. Ano yung mga offensive sa Jewish believers? Let them abstain from pollution of idols. Kasi alam nyo man mga hidden, mga Gentiles, mga idolaters. So dapat wala ng mga ganun. And a blood, fornication, and things from strong, things strangled. Mahilig sa mga pinikpikan, mahilig sa mga ano. So hindi ibig sabihin bawal yun. Pero sabi, sabi lang, ingatan lang nila. Of course, fornication, obviously bawal yun. Dapat hindi. Hindi dapat. Let it be not be one's name among you as become its sin. So proper lang yun. But this also is very offensive sa mga Hudyo. Ang request lang niya that uh, ano po mga kapatid na let them control that area. Sabihin mo yun po la, sabihin mo. <laughs> but they did not seek to place the believers or the Gentile believer under the yoke of the law. For they already realized po mga kapatid that the law had come to an end. That it already ended when Christ came. Amen! And of course, the book of Hebrews, established fact in the book of Hebrews, that it demonstrates the old covenants of the Mosaic law was only temporary. And it's a book of Hebrews is nag-fade na po siya at paalis na po siya, pawala na po siya. It, it is replaced po mga kapatid by a better priesthood, 
by a better covenant which is to be established in the new covenant po mga kapatid. So, hindi po yan sekreto no? that Christ fulfilled the Mosaic law. Christ fulfilled the Mosaic law. I'd like you to to ano po dito po mga kapatid, to take note itong pag-end po niya po mga kapatid. He, 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 anong anong fulfill ni Kristo? Okay? He fulfilled the moral law. Okay? He fulfilled the moral law. Na fulfill niya ang moral law in what way? By his sinless life. Okay? Na fulfill niya ang moral law by his sinless life na mo fulfill niya ang 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 Ten Commandments by living a perfect and sinless life. Amen. When a man will trust Christ po mga kapatid, when a man believe on that finished work of Christ, therefore that Christ's perfect, sinless, righteous life will be imputed to that individual po mga kapatid so that he could be justified. That is for justification. And right now, we have Christ's righteousness so that the, the law could not condemn us. Remember, ang purpose ng law, the law is a terror to them who are unrighteous. Amen. The law was not given for the righteous but for the lawless. But kung ikaw ay already righteous, how could the law judge you? It cannot. It could no longer judge you po mga kapatid. Sa, kasi sa batas, exempted ka kung righteous. Hindi ka naman pwede. Ang law ay just. The law is just. The law will not punish the innocent. But in the eyes of God, in the eyes of the law, you have already imputed the righteousness of Christ. When you believe on Christ, and when the law would look at you, look at you as guiltless, sinless. Amen. Faultless. Why? Because of the righteousness of Christ. Because it's the life of Christ. It's the righteousness of Christ imputed to the believer. Therefore, you could not be anymore be condemned. The law could not no longer condemn you. In the eyes of the law, you are dead to the law. In the eyes of the law, you are exempted. Look at Romans chapter number 7. The Bible says in verse number 4, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. You're already dead to the law. Amen. You're no longer under the law. You're dead to the law. The law has no more dominion over you. It is now the reign of grace. Therefore, there is now no more condemnation. There is now no more condemnation. Look at verse number ano po, mga kapatid? Verse number 5. For when we were in the flesh, the motion of sins which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. Yun po ang purpose, kung hindi pa tayo naligtas, to bring forth fruit unto death. But look at verse 6, But now we were delivered from the law, that being dead were in, we were held, mga kapatid, that we should serve in the newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter, po mga kapatid. So, kita nyo po, we're already delivered, Amen. From the law. We're already dead from the law. We're already delivered from the law. Amen. Kung ikaw po ay nagtaan ng ganun, wala na. Amen. And praise, praise the Lord po mga kapatid. God could not anymore, lo, longer impute sin sa kasalanan na, ng isang believer po mga kapatid. So by this sinless life, itong sinless life, perfect life ni Kristo, napapunta po sa isang believer as the law could not judge Christ when he was he lived having the righteousness of Christ in you and the holiness of Christ the law could not judge you as well praise God amen we're free from that now another thing ano pang fulfill ni Christ po mga kapatid ano pang fulfill ni Christ Christ fulfilled the ceremonial ordinances yung mga ceremonial law po mga kapatid Yung mga ordinances na yun, Christ already fulfilled by nailing it to His cross. Amen. When, when, when Jesus Christ was offered in that sacrifice, He was sinless. He was sinless. So He fulfilled the moral law with His sinless life. And He fulfilled the ceremonial law when He was crucified po mga kapatid. Christ fulfilled the ceremonial ordinances which are the shadows and the types of His person and the type of his work po mga kapatid, by dying on the cross for us, amen, to take our place. By dying on that cross in our place po mga kapatid. So that is something po mga kapatid that worth rejoicing. That this showed that God was also perfect justice 
and sin must be judged. Amen. And but God provided His Son, the precious Lamb of God, without blemish, without spot, mga kapatid. And the penalty which the law exercised was paid when sin was laid upon Him. When sin, amen, when He bore our sins away, He did not escape God's judgment, but, but Jesus Christ became the recipient of God's wrath, po, mga kapatid. And He fulfilled all the things that foreshadows Him all the things that typifies him, his person, and his work po, mga kapatid, at the cross of Calvary. All the, the ceremonial laws that is, which is to be fulfilled, po, mga kapatid, which could not make anyone perfect, but to this man, po, mga kapatid, it makes, he fulfilled all of that, not, cannot be perfect by the blood of bulls and of goats. And Jesus Christ fulfilled that ceremonial law. And also Christ fulfilled the social law. How did Christ fulfill the social law po mga kapatid? By giving to us the Spirit of God. By giving to us the Spirit of God. Pag sinabi mong social, ito yung pamumuhay, ang manner of life, He replaced that law because the social law is, paano niya na, na, na fulfill ang social law? By, by replacing it mga kapatid with a new way of life. Amen. New way of life fitting to our new salvation. And he gave provision already. He created a one new man or a new man, an inner man sa ating buhay. In, that is now the indwelling Holy Spirit sa mananampalataya who enables lahat ng mananampalataya to experience true sanctification, to experience true uh, righteous living. Amen. So that we may experience also the righteousness of the law. So yung righteousness of the law ay fulfilled na sa atin po mga kapatid. Na-fulfilled na. Do you not know? Na-replacean po niya. Na-fulfill natin ang righteousness of the law at ang spirit of the law which the Old Testament believers have not attained po mga kapatid but na-attain sa atin. Bakit? Because of the Holy Spirit. They could not fulfill and perfect the social law. You know why? Because the law is weak through the flesh. And the reason, let's look at Romans 8. Look at Romans 8 mga kapatid. Let me, let me read verse number Verse number 1, starting verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Ano ang description? If you are already in Christ Jesus, you are no longer walking after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So we are, ang ating position, ang ating standing, we are already in the Spirit, or of the Spirit, and after the Spirit. Verse 2, For the law of the spirit of life, look at that word. Where is the law of the spirit of life? In Christ Jesus. So there is the law of the spirit. In Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. We are already liberated. Kanina, we are delivered. We are dead. Now we are free. We are free. Amen. From the law of sin and death. Amen. That's the Mosaic law. But look at verse 3. For what the law could not do, what is the limitation? What the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. It was weak through the flesh. And what is the resolution of God? Because the law is contrary to the sin of men. And as long as there is sin, the law could not do any good to any man. The law will just be a condemnation to any man. So what is the resolution of God? Okay. God sending His own Son. Praise God. Amen. God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Verse number four. What is the purpose of the death of Christ? God sending forth His own Son. What is the purpose, mga kapatid? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Because the weakness of the law, po mga kapatid, is that it is weak through the flesh. So the resolution is para ma-fulfill ng tao ang kanyang batas para hindi siya mahukma ng batas because ang kalaban natin, ang batas pag may kasalanan, He sent His own Son and paid all the penalty of sin and fulfilled all the law required and all the wages and penalty that the law demanded. Christ paid it all. And the result to the believer, the result to have, who has the Holy Spirit now, is that, ano sabi? That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. How do you fulfill the righteousness of the law that might be fulfilled in us? So, ibig sabihin, 
mga kabatid, this is not automatic. But the believer can potentially fulfill the righteousness of the law right now. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. How do you fulfill the righteousness of the law? By walking after the Spirit. You know what's the problem with the Old Testament who are under the law? They don't have the indwelling Spirit just like you and me now. So kahit anong mangyari sa kanila, as long as they were under the law, the law will become their condemner. Tindihan po natin, the law will become a killer to them. The law will become a brutal or a ano po, ruthless judge to them. Yan po ang nangyari because they don't have the spirit. And there is plus there is sin. Ang ginawa ng Panginoon, He removed the sin. In, dito sa panahon natin, under grace, by the death of His Son. And He put us a new law. The law of the Spirit in Christ Jesus. And the Spirit, mga kapatid, when we yield to the Spirit, we are actually fulfilling the righteousness of the law. Although, wala na mga nakalista na ng mga pangalan, wala na tayong mga social law, moral law, and all of that na nakasulat, nakalista na, thou shalt not, and thou shalt not, and all of that, mga kapatid. But we are not contrary, going contrary. Hindi natin, hindi ibig sabihin na, hindi na tayo under the law that kinokontra natin ang sinasabi ng batas. No. But actually, the truth of the matter is, we are fulfilling the righteousness of the law. But not by, by the flesh, but by the Spirit po, mga kapatid. So yun yung law na nasa sa atin. Yun yung inner man, ang Holy Spirit na binigay ng Panginoon sa atin. At mamaya, as we, not mamaya, but sa, as we go further, which is supposed to be next week, ma, 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 makuha po natin, ma, maintindihan nyo kung anong gusto kong ipupunto po mga kapatid. I-describe ko po yun lahat pagdating natin sa teachings of grace po mga kapatid. So, Jesus Christ fulfilled that ceremonial law. Amen. He fulfilled that po mga kapatid. All of that, kikita po natin. And Jesus Christ fulfilled that social law by providing us the Holy Spirit we could now live, amen, according to the righteousness of the law. We could now live according to the spirit of the law, which the Old Testament believer, the Israelites, could not. But we have now the spirit of God. This is now the new administration. That is now the new law that is in us, trying to teach us how to live. Ang Holy Spirit, hindi siya taga-condemn. Oh, mali ka! Patay ka! That's the law, mosaic law. Pero ang, ang ano po mga kapatid, ang law of the spirit sa buhay po natin, siya yung nag-grow na lang siya, nagigrieve siya, pero hindi ka niya i-condemn. Intindihan po natin? Mariresist natin ang Holy Ghost, pero hindi ka niya i-condemn. Nagigrieve po siya every day, nagigrieve po natin ang Holy Spirit as long as hindi tayo sumusunod sa kanyang leading. Hindi tayo nag-yield, hindi tayo na fulfilled sa kanya. If we don't allow him to take control sa buhay natin, nagigrieve po siya. Pero hindi siya nagko-condemn, hindi kagaya po ng mosaic law. Mosaic law, isang violation mo, wala ka nang kinalaman sa kanya. You have to deal with that violation. You have to satisfy me because grabe ka tyrant ang law. Pero ang spirit po mga kapatid, nag-grow siya at pinapatuloy kanyang pinanalangin. Make it intercession with the saints with groanings. Make it intercession for the saints with groanings that cannot be uttered. Patuloy lang siya, nagpipray. Patuloy siyang nag, nag-work sa inyo. Work it in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. Nagtuturo siya sa iyo, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly lust, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Hanggat na believer ay hindi niya, hindi niya papansinin ang working ng Holy Spirit sa pamamagitan ng salita ng Diyos, ay wala talaga siya, mga kapatid. Out of the ano po talaga siya. But he's still saved. Amen. Pero po mga kapatid, ang kanyang buhay ay hindi kaaya-aya. Pero look at those believers who follow po mga kapatid, the leading of the Spirit, the teaching of the Spirit, the guidance of the Spirit. Ay napakaganda. Makikita natin yung buhay ni Kristo sa buhay ng mananampalataya po na yun. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about more of that as we go on po mga kapatid, sa life under grace. But what I'm saying is, we have now the indwelling Spirit who enable us to experience true sanctification. True holiness, true spirituality. And that is the, the series that we have every morning sa prayer breakfast, the true spirituality. And on, that only the Holy Spirit can provide, po mga kapatid. Only the Holy Spirit can provide. Woo! 
Glory. I thank God I, I live under grace po mga kapatid. Amen. Having the Holy Spirit. I am weak. I'm nobody. I'm no good. But He gave me the Holy Spirit so that I could live. Amen. I could live a, 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 a life that is pleasing and glorifying to God. Having the Holy Spirit in me po mga kapatid. Praise. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 And uh, mga kapatid, anong, anong summary po na gusto kong ilagay po dito muna sa type dito sa end of the mosaiclo po mga kapatid. Anong, ano pong summary na gusto kong iano po niyan? Gusto ko pong ipakita po mga kapatid. Okay, ano pong summary na gusto kong ipakita? First of mga kapatid, that the law, isa summarize ko muna bago ko pupuntahan tong law and warnings and lahat ng iyan. Mga kapatid, I, that the law which was given by Moses was a covenant of works. Man, like to understand that. It was a covenant of works. Dito. Amen. Not of faith. Clear po yun. Na-establish po natin yun. It's a covenant of works. Okay. Sulat po natin. This is a covenant of works. Not faith. Dito po mga kapatid, it is faith. Dito, works. Kaya nga, mag, paano ma-end ang law? Paano mag-end ang law? It would be shut up by faith. So, hindi po sila ano. So, the, the, the law operates through works. Grace operates through faith. Nakita po natin? It operates through faith. Dito, the, 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 the law operates through works. Uh, maintindihan po natin po mga kapatid. So, the law that it was added after centuries of human history and that its reign, mga kapatid, was terminated, the reign of the law was terminated by the death of Christ. Amen. And it was given only to Israel. The law, the Mosaic law was given only to Israel. And since it was never given to the Gentiles, so the only, anong relationship natin kung hindi naman binigay sa Gentile po itong mga bagay na ito? So what is our relationship with the law? So the only relation that the Gentiles can sustain to it is without any divine authority to impose it upon themselves. Ang ating relation dito is we don't impose it to ourselves. And it cannot be imposed it to ourselves. When you try to impose it to ourselves, there is no divine sanction. There is no divine warrant for you to do that. It's by your own, po mga kabatid. And clear po yun po mga kabatid. So Christ is the end of the law. Amen. And believers are not under the Mosaic law. So because Christ and the law and the believers now in the New Testament sa panahon natin is no longer, mga kapatid, under the law. So since the Lord Jesus Christ fulfills the law by His person, Amen, He fulfills the law by His person, yung moral law, by His work po mga kapatid, Amen, by ceremonial and by providing the Holy Spirit to us, po, mga kapatid, sabi ng Bible, if you are led by the Spirit, you are no longer under the law. We are not under the law. So He provided us the Spirit so that we could live, amen, a life that is pleasing and glorifying to Him. So since Jesus Christ fulfilled all the law by His person and by His work, therefore believers are under a new law. Amen. That is now, that's why makakita ka, so since si Cristo po ang maka makaano po niyan, nakafulfill sa mosaic law, therefore the believers is under a new law. Anong, what law are you talking about? I mentioned one law po mga kapatid. That is the law of the Spirit. Ikita natin kanina, dito sa grace po mga kapatid, we have now the law of the Spirit. Ito kasi in Christ po mga kapatid. Another law na makikita mo po ito po mga kapatid, it could also be termed in verse number ano po mga kapatid, 2 of Galatians 6. Let me look at Galatians 6. The Bible says po mga kapatid, Bear ye one another's burden, so fulfill the law of Christ. So there is, it is also termed mga kapatid as the law of Christ. No longer the Mosaic law, but it is also called as the law of Christ. It is called as the Law of the Spirit, or we call it the Law of Christ. Alam mo nyo naman ng Law of Christ po mga kapatid. And uh, look at this, 1 Corinthians chapter number 9, verse 21. We're under a new law. And that's the therefore the Law of Christ. Look at, hindi ba kayo nagtanong sa 1 Corinthians 9? 
Babasahin ko po verse number 21. Ang ito ang sabi ni Paul doon po. Sabi niya dito sa verse number Let me start with verse 20 baka mag para may context po tayo po mga kapatid. Look at verse number kasi tandaan po natin, eh, go ahead. Tama 'yun. We are no longer under the law. What law are we talking about? The Mosaic law. But we are under grace. But hindi ibig sabihin, gusto ko maintindihan natin ng maayos para hindi tayo ma, ma miss ano po mga kapatid na ma miss understand ng iba, misunderstood ng iba po mga kapatid is this. Hindi ibig sabihin na under grace ka, na lawless ka na. Na wala ka ng control, wala nang nags- No, the, the the fact that the Holy Spirit is already in us, siya yung nag nagdidictate supposedly at nagtuturo sa atin how we should live and we should be obedient to it and we should be under sa kanyang rule and leading po mga kapatid. That's the believer's life under grace po mga kapatid. Pero ang kanyang approach hindi po killer, hindi po condemner, hindi po ruthless po mga kapatid, but ang kanyang approach is gracious. But we still have laws and the bible calls it the law of the spirit and the law of christ which is love amen which is love we're still under a certain law but that no longer the mosaic law clear huh? no longer by by any way the gentile was never under the mosaic law we were not under the mosaic law dito po sa old testament because it was given to the nation of israel neither can we be under the mosaic law In the time and age, because Jesus Christ already fulfilled that law, there was never a time that the Gentiles were under the Mosaic law, except kung nagpa nagiging proselyte ka or nagpapasakop ka sa bansang Israel. Pero ang ordinary Gentiles, where were law? Walat ay ng batas, mga kapatid. Walat ay ng written law, but we have a law written, the works of the law written in our hearts. At yun yung expression ng panginoon, or expression of who God is. But look at nine. 1 Corinthians 9, verse number 9 at 20. Let me read. Sabi ni Paul, Unto the Jews I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. Sino yung under the law? Mga Hudyo. Verse number 21, look at. To them that are without law, as without law, okay, So to them that are without law, so without law, outside the law, ang tinutukoy dito the Mosaic law. Okay? As without law. So yun ang kanyang ano niya. Pero sino yung without the law? These are the Gentiles without law, without the Mosaic law. But look at the, the commentary of Paul with open and close parenthesis. Sabi niya dito, being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ. So tayo ay without law. But not ibig sabihin we are lawless. Not being, sabi niya dito, not being, being not without the law to God, but we are under the law to, to, the law to Christ. So it doesn't mean that we're here, that we're lawless. We're under the law of Christ. We're law to Christ. We are Christ now. We're under, because Christ is now our head. Amen. Christ is our Savior. He is now our Lord. And He is our head. And we are now Our lives must be in submission to Him. Our life must be subject to Him. Amen. Our life must be under sa kanyang sariling law. But His law is gracious. His law is kind. His law is good to us. Amen. We're under His protective care. And we're law under the law to Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the body of Christ po mga kapatid. Under po doon. And ano yung law of Christ? Yun yung bearing one another, forgiving one another, loving one another. And mga kapatid, ano, ano yung law na makikita po natin dito sa law of the Spirit? Ano tong law of the Spirit that we, were, we are under right now po mga kapatid? Amen. And that is the fruit of the Spirit. Mamaya puntahan po natin yung mga kapatid. So, we are... Since the the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who fulfilled all the law, then we are un He is our Savior, then He is our Head. Then the believers now, the New Testament believers now, are under a new law. We are under now that obligation, and that obligation is to walk by the Spirit of life because that's the law of the Spirit of life through faith. It is now through no longer through works, but it is through faith, pumaka pa den. Because grace ng operation. 
So ang biyaya, ang, ang operation ng biyaya ay sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. If we were led by the Spirit, mga kapatid, then we were not under the law. So ang ating ano nito, hindi to ay, tayo under ng musayklo, pero under na tayo ng leading ng Holy Spirit. We're under the leading of the Holy Spirit. At yung, kaya binigyan tayo ng new nature that would work harmony with our inner man. And that is the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, po mga kapatid. Why should I go ahead? By the way, we will talk about more of this as we go next week, po mga kapatid. I go on ahead with some of the things that we need to discuss. But I don't want to leave you na, baka isipin nyo na, oh, hindi na ako under sa batas. I could do whatever I want. That's wrong. Sabi ng Bible, shall we continue in sin that gra- because grace abound? God forbid! Ano sabi po ng Bible? Shall we now sin because we are no longer under the law but under grace? God forbid! We, we lack understanding if that's so. It doesn't mean that you make lawless or you become lawless. But grace is a teacher. Just like the law is a teacher. Teaching. The law is a teaching. The teachings of the law. The law also teaches. Uh, the grace of God also teaches you that denying ungodliness, teaching us that denying ungodliness, worldly laws, that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Hindi pwede na, ma, ma, hindi ka na under the law. Woo! I could do whatever I want. I am free. No, you don't understand. You don't understand kung ganun po ang ating mentality. But we are given the law of the Spirit in us and we are given the fruit of the spirit and the fruit of the spirit now is the op- in operation under the highest law it is a, under the highest law a law directly to the standards mga kapatid of the holy god and the standards are met ito pong ano po ito, as we walk by the holy spirit and grow in the word of god and we can fulfill righteousness which is of the law Magmaano po natin po mga kapatid. Look at, look at Galatians chapter number 5. Balikan po natin Galatians 5. Few minutes lang ang ating time, no? Galatians 5. But we're determined to finish lahat ng ito po mga kapatid. Okay? Galatians 5 muna. Bilisan lang natin. The Bible says in verse number, you know, the fruit of the Spirit. Look at verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is now the operation. You want to know the operation of the, of the ano po mga kapatid? Hindi masyado don'ts. Sa mosaic law, puro thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Mas marami yung thou shalt not kaysa thou shalt. Marami yung do, oh, thou shalt not do this and kaysa do, doing. So, puro negative, alos negative. Thou shalt not. Pero sa, sa atin po mga kapatid, sa law of the spirit, ay halos puro ano po, halos, halos ha, puro naman positive. It's the focus is not do not do this, but the focus of the law of the spirit is do this, do this, do that. It's not do not, but it's do this. And what is that? But the fruit of the spirit is love. Amen. Be loving. Love God. Love God's people. Love God's word, and you could feel that. Love your brother. Love the church. Dami po yan. So Bible joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I, I say rejoice. Amen. And rejoice evermore. Oh, yun, ang, yun ang command. Amen. And peace. Amen. Let the peace of God will rule in your heart. Be, live peaceably with all men. Long suffering. Amen. You have to be lo- suffer long. Suffer to be defrauded. Amen. Bear. Just bear, just sustain some some persecution. Gentleness, wow. Goodness. Faith. It's more about be gentle. Do not be too harsh. Do not be too ruthless. And be good. Di ba nakita niyo po mga kapatid? And faith. Be faithful. Have that faith. Be faithful to God. Be faithful to the duty. Meekness. Amen. Be meek. Be lowly. And temperance. Have that control, self-control. Let the Holy Spirit control your spirit. Amen. And look at what's the next part. Against such, there is no law. Against such, there is no law. That is to say, mga kapatid, it doesn't mean 
that we're no longer under the Mosaic law, that we're against the Mosaic law. Although we are not told to do everything, but when you walk in the Spirit, when you bear the fruit of the Spirit, you are violating no law, no Mosaic law. Not a bit, not a slightest of it, but rather you even fulfill. The real fulfillment of the, of the law of God or the Mosaic law is by doing this. And only the Spirit can do this. And the man, the, the, no Spirit of God cannot do this. Only the believer can because he has the Holy Spirit. It is not the byproduct of the flesh. It is not the fruit of the goodness of the flesh or the working of the flesh, but it is the fruit of the Spirit. And against such, there is no law. And that's how grace operates. You know, a gracious man will always love. A gracious man will have that joy, will have that peace, has that long suffering. He is gentle. He is good. He has faith. He is meek and have that temperance. Amen. It's not worketh on wrath. And sabi dito, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So paano to mamit itong standards na ito? It can only be met po mga kapatid. This, these are met as we walk by the Holy Spirit and grow in the Word of God. That's it. But walking in the Spirit, and I will... We'll talk about more of that, mga kapatid, next time as we go on ahead po, mga kapatid. So, uh, I'd like you to understand that po, mga kapatid. So, that's the, that's the I'd like you to, to summarize doon sa end of the Mosaic clause, the rule of life. Amen. Ano nang rule of life natin? Grace. We're under grace. Amen. Okay, that's why we'll have a topic, life under grace. Next, mga kapatid, the lawful use of the law as believers. So, an, nandyan eh. Nandyan ang Bible eh. Nandyan ang law eh. Ano ang lawful use of the law? Nandyan yan eh. Anong, anong, anong relationship natin ngayon, mga kapatid, sa Mosaic law? You know, the law is still good from the standpoint of its main function. It is good from its main function and purpose. As we discuss about the purpose and function of the law, it's always good, po, mga kapatid. From that standpoint po, mga kapatid. May kita po natin. And uh, that's why this is how James used the law to reveal sin. Can I still use the law by revealing myself? Yes, that I sin. Yes, why not? That is the purpose of the law, to reveal sin. To reveal that we sin. We violate the holiness of God. Amen. To get believers so that we could get out of our realm of legalism, mga kapatid, and move into walk by faith and living to the Savior po, mga kapatid. So, anong, new, anong relationship ng New Testament believers to the Mosaic Law? What is the, the relationship of the New Testament believers to the Mosaic Law po, mga kapatid? Ano po ang relationship natin? Nakikita po natin? Number one, mga kapatid, that He is never saved by keeping the law. I'd like you to understand. Anong relationship natin? That we are never saved. Anong lawful use? and relationship natin? We are never saved by keeping the law. So dapat maintindihan mo na hindi ka naligtas dahil nag-keep ka ng law. And number two po mga kapatid, ano relationship na, ng believer? That he is not under the law as the rule of life. You are not, no longer under the law as the rule of life. Yun dapat maintindihan mo dito. But rather you are under grace. So when you, when you say you are no longer under the law as the rule of life, that includes a sacrifice, that includes Sabbath keeping po mga kapatid. And listen, that includes tithing. Huwag matakot dyan. Ba't matatakot ka? Kasama yan. Kasi in, inseparable ang law. Finulfill ni Kristo po yun. But it doesn't, me, it doesn't mean na hindi ka nagbibigay. But ang rule of life mo sa pagbibigay is no longer the rule of the law. But ang pagbibigay mo, it should be the according to the law of the Spirit and the law of Christ or the grace of God, mga kapatid. Because you are now under grace. And that, that is the thing po mga kapatid that dapat maintindihan ng isang believer. Yun ang relationship mo. You are never saved by keeping the law. You are not under the law as the rule of life. Amen. And also, okay, the believer does not walk by the law. Amen. The believer does not walk by the law but by the Spirit. That's what the Bible says. We walk by the Spirit. If you walk by the letter, not by the Spirit, you will become a Pharisee. 
but walk by the Spirit. Let that walk, that 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 conversation, that manner of life, mga kapatid, natin is prompt by the Holy Spirit. Is because of the leading of the Holy Spirit, not just because of, by virtue of you are a disciplined person, a trained person. That's all works by the flesh, po mga kapatid. Do not have reliance on ourselves, but on the Spirit of God. Let Him take control. Follow, obey the Bible, but do not obey the Bible by the letter, but by the Spirit, po mga kapatid. Because once it's by the Spirit, it is it produces true spirituality, po mga kapatid. Amen. Amen. True faith by believing on the Word of God. Amen. Ano pang relationship ng isang believer to the New Testament? He is dead to the law. You are already dead to the law. You are already dead to the law, mga kapatid. Huwag mo natin kalimutan. You are already dead to the law. Nabasa na natin kanina sa Romans chapter number 7, sa Galatians chapter number 2. Let me read verse number 19. For I through the law am dead to the law that I might live unto God. You are already dead to the law. Amen. By virtue of his, your union with Christ who fulfilled the law, you are already in Christ. You are under Christ. You are in Christ, not in the law. You are in Christ. You are under Christ, not under the law. And that, 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 should, that should be crystal clear sa isang mananampalataya. And ano pang relationship na isang believer? Dito, anong lawful use of the law as believers, New Testament believers? Po, mga kapatid, we are to fulfill, we are to fulfill the righteousness of the law. Paano mo ma-fulfill ang righteousness of the law, mga kapatid? By being filled with the Spirit. Amen. But being filled with the Spirit. This can only be, the righteousness of the law can be only be fulfilled by being filled with the Spirit, po, mga kapatid. Be filled, the, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's the only way po mga kapatid. It could be only be fulfilled through knowledge of the Bible truth, knowledge of the Word of God, and feeling of the Holy Spirit which furnishes us the power, it furnishes us the ability po mga kapatid needed to live a Christian life under grace po mga kapatid. So we are under God's new law and that is the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. That is the law of Christ po mga kapatid. Amen. How, how do we fulfill How do we fulfill the righteousness of the law? By walking after the Spirit and by being led by the Spirit. Tatlo po yun, no? How do we fulfill? By being filled with the Spirit, walking after the Spirit, and being led by the Spirit of God. That's, that's how we should fulfill the righteousness of the law. And last but not the least po, mga kapatid, warning against the entanglements with the law as believers today. Amen. So be careful kasi ibibig sabihin ano po but pwede pa rin tayong maintanggal sa law. That after salvation by grace there is the danger of reverting to the law. There is a danger to go back to the law. Or legalism. There is danger to 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 live a Christian life being a legalist na holier than thou. Pag holier than thou po mga kapatid, ang real na holier than thou ay hindi yung sinasabi. Example, bibigyan ko kayo ng example. Ha? Yung mga ladies natin, na nag, na, ang mga ladies by the grace of God ng church natin, namin specifically by the grace of God, they they try to, ano po mga kapatid, wear that modest apparel because that's what the Bible says, but not as a legalist, not as a holier than thou. And we would like our ladies po mga kapatid, to wear a modest apparel because that's an acknowledgement because we are weak. Amen. That's not holier than thou. That is an admittance that we're weak. And we would like them, mga kapatid, to dress properly because we're weak in the flesh. Kung wala ka spirit, madali kang mahulog po, mga kapatid. But if you are in the spirit, I don't think you will dress naked also po, mga kapatid. We'd like to dress right. But the, 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 we were accused that holier than thou. No, it is an acknowledgement that once na mag, hindi ka mag-indecent dress ka dyan at sabi mo na uh, hindi ka naapektuhan, that is holier than thou. That is holier than thou. But when you admit, mga kapatid, na we're weak, please, ladies, help us with our infirmities, dress right. And when you do it, not according to the law, When you do it according to the Spirit, not it's because it you are told to do so, it's because it's the law. No, we don't. 
it's not a law to 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 dress modestly but it's just right it is part of the outworking of the spirit it is putting the out uh, the inner man amen putting on the the lord jesus christ if you put on the lord jesus christ i don't think a woman would wear some indecent and some whoredom or dress of a harlot in an assembly or in the community po mga kapatid but i think it, it, he would dress mga kapatid professing godliness amen professing holiness inwardly po mga kapatid ang pharisaical po mga kapatid kung walang inward change tapos may outward change yun ang problema you know what happens sa law because they don't have the spirit of god ang puro sila panlabas puro sila outward po mga kapatid that's legalism Pakitang tao, but God who knows their heart and God who sees their heart saw how wicked it is. Amen. How rebellious that heart is. That's why God judged them po mga kapatid. And that's the danger also sa atin. We'll say we're no longer under the law, but we try to fix the outward, but we have a problem in the inside. But let it be po mga kapatid, na ayusin natin ang loob natin at ang ebid ebidensya niyan ay nasa labas lalabas at lalabas ang ebidensya sa ating words, sa ating damit, sa ating hindi holier than thou. But I'm just giving you warning, but even under grace, you could try to profess that you are walking in the spirit when you are not. And you could revert to the law, go back to the law, go back to legalism, to go back to the law as the way of life, mga kapatid, puts you under the control of the flesh. And it nullifies true spirituality. Amen. It nullifies. Amen. And it defeats the believer. Amen. It results to human good. It results to human domination. It results to the domination of our own flesh, the own sinful nature. And that's the problem. Ang warning po natin, is this bit, can be true sa isang believer? Pwede pa? Yes. That's what happened to the Galatians. That's what happened to the Galatians. Let's look at po mga kapatid, last verse. Uh, we're done po dito po mga kapatid. This is what happened to the Galatians. Anong sabi sa Galatians chapter number 3? Paul said, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Verse 2, This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the spirit of the works by the works of the law or by hearing of faith. Verse 3, Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? So yun po, pwede ka, nag-umpisa, na-save ka. You began by the spirit. Salvation is because of the spirit of God po mga kapatid. By the spirit. And are you now made perfect by the flesh? So kung nag-umpisa ka sa Holy Spirit, dapat hindi ka ma-perfect by the flesh. Dapat magtapos ka by the spirit pa rin. So, hindi pwede na ligtas ka, pero outwardly, you are dominated by the flesh. Nagpapatuloy ka in your Christian life by the flesh. That's foolishness po mga kapatid. Okay, kaya, take note on this. Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? The flesh, there's nothing by the flesh could make you perfect. Make you perfect only by the spirit of God po mga kapatid. And take note on that. And that's very important natin. Para hindi tayo, you know what's the difference between a true believer, true genuine, true spirituality and a pharisaical Christian life, a true spiritual person and a Pharisee, you know what's the difference? Po mga kapatid, the Holy Spirit is the difference maker. A true spiritual man has the Spirit working mightily in him and he yielded to the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit prompts him to do. But a Pharisee, mga kapatid, is a, a, attempting to be holy by the flesh without the Holy Spirit in Him. Po, mga kapatid. Let's not do that. Let's not go back to the law. And I'll talk about that, mga kapatid, as we go to the teachings of grace. And the Bible gives us warning by not only going back to the law, but even mixing grace and law. Even mixing faith and works. And that's it, po, mga kapatid. I hope may natutunan po tayo sa teachings of the law. Kasi hindi naman talaga ito ang pinakaano natin pinaka-subject matter natin. But it is so important na maintindihan natin yung relationship. It paves the way as we go to the teachings of grace. Madami ka nang natutunan, marami ka nang makukuha po mga kapatid as we relate ourselves dito sa law. Kasi 
perfect contrast po ang ang ano eh, ang law sa grace. Kaya napaka napaka ano po mga kapatid, napaka ganda po siyang tingnan as teaching method and tools para ma-explain further the nature of being under grace. And praise the Lord, praise God sa kanyang goodness sa atin, sa kabutihan sa atin. At salamat sa bawat isa na sumabaybay sa atin, kasama po natin ngayong umaga, dito sa Zoom, dito din sa atin pong FB Live. Thank you brethren for staying and I hope you learn something this morning and something to live by, something to praise God for po mga kapatid. And if you have not learned anything po mga kapatid, but don't miss this, you're no longer under the law, but under grace. And the law was fulfilled. And then everything, everything at all entirety by the Lord Jesus Christ. Be saved now po mga kapatid. Don't trust your works, but trust what Christ already accomplished for you. And that is salvation. It could only be accomplished mga kapatid and be to you experience sa isang taong mananampalataya. Mananampalataya na sumandal sa kanyang natapos ng ginawa. And that is salvation. And God bless everyone and have a good day. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Joma. And we're done here. Let's go close in prayer, by the way. Thank you, Lord, sa inyong binigay sa amin na lesson ngayong umaga. Bless us, Lord, as we go tomorrow for the battlefield of the mind. And even, Lord, sa next week para sa topic po na ito as we go formally doon sa teachings of grace, Panginoon. And help us, Lord, and thank you. Sana ma-appreciate namin patuloy ang inyong salita. And bless the brethren who are listening right now. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Paul. And God bless all. God bless us all. See you tomorrow. Thank you, Evangelist. Sir, pwedeng maka-screenshot ulit. Okay. Sige. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Bye-bye.